So it would make Pennsylvania's Controlled Substances Act match the federal version and eliminate a legal gray area that exists right now. And that's important because uh, we don't want anybody to fear prosecution uh, and interactions with the police over a legal product. Hemp entrepreneurs should not have to fear whether they're going to get tangled up in legal proceedings over their farms or their businesses. That's Pennsylvania State Senator Tim Carney talking about a recent bill he introduced that would bring Pennsylvania's definition of hemp in line with the federal definition. This is the Lancaster Farming Industrial Hemp Podcast. My name is Eric Herlock. Today I'm going to talk to Senator Carney about this bill, why it's important, and what it's going to take to get it signed into law. We'll take a quick sponsor break, and then we'll come back with a few nuggets of hemp news. This episode is brought to you in part by Impactful Ventures, an investment and incubation company focused on supporting startups and other initiatives that play a vital role in reversing the adverse effects of climate change. They strive to amplify enterprises which bring innovative green opportunities to the forefront and empower those making a significant impact for a sustainable future. You can learn more at mpactfulventures.org. This episode is brought to you in part by IND Hemp in Fort Benton, Montana, where their mission is to provide innovative agricultural products and services to connect American farmers with the pioneers and businesses that see hemp as a way to bring real and lasting change to our communities and planet. I-N-D Hemp. Hello and welcome back. Uh, Just getting into the the swing of things here. I took some time off uh, in January. Hope you didn't miss me too much. I did hear from some of you. Uh, It's nice to know that you you missed me a little bit. Anyway, here we are the first week of February, and I've got a handful of news nuggets for you. This first one is uh, from the USDA. The USDA has issued its first national hemp report. So, um, yeah, the, uh, the AMS... The Agriculture Marketing Service announced last week the issuance of the first edition of the new weekly National Hemp Report. The free and publicly available National Hemp Report provides unbiased, timely, and accurate data to help industry stakeholders to make decisions. Yeah, all right, so what's in this report? Yeah, good question. Well, uh, it seems that this hemp report contains retail advertised prices of hemp products nationally and by region, along with volumes and cost, insurance, and freight values of hemp imports into the U.S. The report will be issued every Wednesday. So there you go. Now we have something else to look forward to on Wednesdays. All right, this next news nugget comes directly from the FDA. It turns out they've concluded that existing regulatory frameworks for food and supplements are not appropriate for CBD, and they want to work with Congress on a new way forward. This is from Janet Woodcock, the Principal Deputy Commissioner. She says that given the growing CBD products market, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration convened a high-level internal working group to explore potential regulatory pathways for CBD products. And today we are announcing that after careful review, the FDA has concluded that a new regulatory pathway for CBD is needed that balances individuals' desire for access to CBD products with the regulatory oversight needed to manage risks. So I guess this means that we're not going to get any guidance from the FDA anytime soon. All right, and here is a story from Pennsylvania. It says that the Shapiro administration, that's our new governor, Josh Shapiro, awards $200,000 to grow hemp industry and invites proposals for $392,000 in grants. The story says that the Secretary of Agriculture announced $200,000 in grants to three agriculture nonprofits to fund projects aimed at growing fiber and food hemp markets, sales, and awareness in Pennsylvania. 
The secretary also called for proposals from marketing and promotion nonprofits for an additional $392,000 in grants to be awarded in March of 2023. So it looks like there were three different grant recipients. Uh, $48,000 went to Urban Affairs Coalition and All Together Now Pennsylvania for their Pennsylvania Hemp Now project. The Pennsylvania Hemp Industry Council uh, is getting $150,000 for their project Invest in PA Hemp. And Transition Town Media is getting $2,000 for promoting hemp as a transitional product to next generation economy. So congratulations to you all. And uh, maybe in future episodes, we will dig in and see what these organizations are up to. Although uh, I think we do know some folks in these organizations, right? We've interviewed people from All Together Now Pennsylvania and the Pennsylvania Hemp Industry Council. So anyway, um, and it looks like, yeah, there's money available too for other organizations who want to get in on this. I'll have a link to the grant application page on the show page for this episode at LancasterFarming.com. All right. And lastly, uh, here's something, I think it's a news nugget, but it's actually more of an investment opportunity. So uh, back in October, I interviewed uh, John Roberts and Michael Dalemole from Mariposa Technology. They have this uh, handheld scanning device that you can use in the field, you know, for uh, in-field immediate testing for THC levels, things like that. It looks to me like it's going to be, you know, sort of a game changer. And so they're now in their second round of fundraising using regulation crowdfunding, which allows them to raise money from non-accredited retail investors. And by going this route, literally anyone who wants to invest in Mariposa technology can do so through the platform WeFunder. So I will have a link to that on the show page for this episode, along with all the other links to the other stories I told you about. Okay. All right, so we're going to get into our interview now with Senator Carney. And I know this is a Pennsylvania-specific interview, but really, I don't know, it's got implications uh, for, you know, the wider hemp audience. So I hope you enjoy it. Hope you get something from it. All right, I'll see you on the other side. Pennsylvania Senator Tim Carney. A uh, Democrat from District 26 in Delaware County, welcome to the Lancaster Farming Industrial Hemp Podcast. How are you doing today? Very fine, Eric. How are you today? Do, uh, doing well, thanks. Happy to be here. Good, good. All right, so last week you reintroduced some legislation uh, that would reconcile the state definition of hemp with the federal definition of hemp. So I wonder if you could first explain what that issue is, how those two definitions differ, and why it's important that we bring them together. Sure. So it, you know, it, it's basically, um, you know, we're all very interested in getting hemp up and running as a real, um, a, a real force in Pennsylvania again. You know, Pennsylvania used to be the hemp capital of the country um, at, at one point. Uh, this bill basically uh, distinguishes industrial hemp and products manufactured from hemp from marijuana, which is obviously a con- still considered a controlled substance. So it would make Pennsylvania's Controlled Substances Act match the federal version and eliminate a legal gray area that exists right now. And that's important because uh, we don't want anybody to fear prosecution uh, and interactions with the police over a legal product. Hemp entrepreneurs should not have to fear whether they're going to get tangled up in legal proceedings over their farms or their businesses. And we want to see this industry grow in Pennsylvania. To do that, we need people to feel safe to approach the industry, whether it's as a consumer, an investor, an employee, or an entrepreneur. Okay. Can you like cite some examples of how, um, you know, like real world examples of how this sort of difference in definition has maybe um, caused problems for Pennsylvania farmers? Sure. I mean, there have been... Uh, stories that we've heard, uh, you know, about entrepreneurs in industrial hemp uh, who have been charged with possession and other marijuana-related charges by police. Um, it's be tough for the, you know, it's tough for the police because their field tests often detect the presence of THC, uh, but it doesn't really measure how much THC is present in the process. Um, I've been told that most people who smoke hemp usually wind up with a headache instead of a high. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, it seems the police are becoming more well the, uh, more aware of the legality of hemp products. Uh, the stories you hear about people getting questions about 
hemp flower products or CBD are becoming rarer, but still there shouldn't be any doubt for farmers or, or processors, truckers or distributors, um, they need to be free to make a living with hemp. And we want this industry to grow. Uh, supply chain and consumers should have total confidence. Okay, um, so what's the likelihood of getting this legislation passed this time? Like, I get a sense that the climate in Harrisburg is changing a little bit, but what's it going to take? A little bit. We're st we're st the jury's still out on the climate right now. We're only just getting started on this uh, um, uh, this particular uh, session, and there have been a lot of changes. There are there will be seven new Republicans in the Senate, uh, and we're going to try to talk to all of them about it. Um, you know, to get this ready for passage, I think what we need to see is more movement uh, around the, the larger piece of legislation regarding adult use, uh, either through decriminalization or legalization. Um, and it needs to be part of a larger agricultural focused legislative package. It's not that the bill is controversial, but because the you know, state of partisan politics in Harrisburg, unless you have majority party legislators who prioritize getting this done, a small bill like this falls through the, the cracks. Now, we are having conversations with uh, uh, some of my colleagues on the other side about the importance of this, and uh, particularly the ones who are very involved in agriculture uh, really do seem to understand it. Okay. Um, so can you get more into like what's gonna, what it's going to take like politically to get it done? You know, obviously, you always have to convince people of moving forward. And it, it's the, the real problem is, is that uh, it, it's association with marijuana right now. And there's, that's, a, that's a tough uh, hill for people to climb, uh, uh, particularly on the other side of the, of the aisle. Um, we're, we're seeing you know, movement forward on it. I think that uh, we will see uh, uh, adult use sometime in the next two years, I think. Uh, just it's, it, it's coming, you know, and it's coming all around us and everything else. And we don't want Pennsylvania to be left uh, behind uh, in terms of as this kind of works. And, you know, quite frankly, we've already, there's lots of things to learn from where this is not a new thing. Uh, so many states have, have done it now and so many states have succeeded and other states have had problems and we can learn from all those things about trying to move it all, uh, move it all forward. Right. Okay. Um, from where I sit, it's like there's there's a few different ways to, to look at industrial hemp, right? So you've got everything. Everything now is that is considered hemp if it's got less than 0.3% THC. And so that includes the CBD and all of the medicinal things that aren't, you know, THC. But then there's the whole other side of the industrial parts of the plant, the fiber and the grain that really have like nothing to do with the medicinal side. You know, it's the flower that they use for the medicine. And I think if we could separate, you know, all of the medicinal uses, that's marijuana and CBD and all of that stuff sort of over in one bucket, like regulatory bucket, and then focus on the industrial side of things, the fiber, the grain, the things you can make from it, the food you can make from it. Um, I think that would do a greater good for farmers in, in the state. If we could just keep all of the, the medicinal stuff to one side. So like, I, I love your bill and I think it's, it's a great thing that we need to do. We need to, uh, yeah, we need to reschedule cannabis federally mm -hmm. uh, at the state level, all of that. Um, for me, it's like the marijuana conversation and the CBD stuff is, it's beside the point of, of what the potential of the hemp industry is like it's a big distraction because like you said it's like it's a tough hill for people to climb because of that association with with marijuana and you know all of the reefer madness and the you know the war on drugs that stuff but it's like if you could just cut that stuff out of the conversation and look at this crop that can be grown you know in rotation with corn and soy and you can grow it at scale and it sequesters carbon like nothing else. And while commodity crops in general, like corn, can be used in a couple of different ways, right? Uh, soy, yeah. you know, we, we do oils and, and food, all that stuff. But the hemp plant, you know, can be used for thousands of different things. And I think it could fundamentally change the economy in Pennsylvania. Um, if we, you know, we could bring manufacturing jobs back, I don't know, there's just so much potential on the industrial side. Um, so I'll climb off my soapbox here in a, in a sec, but. Well, no, I, I completely agree with you. The, uh, um, 
know, there's a professor doing research up at Jefferson University in, in, in Philly who's, you know, I, last time we talked, I don't know how many, you know, tens of thousands of, uh, of uh, things that you can make from, from, from hemp. Yeah. Um, I was on a panel in media not that long ago and really got, a, I think, a much better understanding of, of the fiber side of it. And that's what we're in Delaware County. Certainly, that's what I'm really interested mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Because I want the hemp to be grown in Lancaster County and in Chester County, and have a short supply chain. Exactly. To come to be produced into uh, in, into products here in in, in Delco. Right. Uh, you know, it, it's um, uh, I'm, I'm an architect by you know that, that's my my at least was my day job. <laughs> um, before my wife fired me for not showing up at work. Uh -oh. Well, you, you had uh, the, something uh, else to do, right? You were... But you know, a hempcrete is is a wonderful, uh, you know, insulator and 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 construction uh, thing that we could be using. Um, and you know, again, this if we don't successfully separate it in people's minds from uh, the, the sort of the the medicinal use or the you know the the, the cannabis mm -hmm. uh, part of it, then, then um, we're going to continue to have have problems on it. Yep. Um, yep. You know, but fiber and grain. Uh, is in, so useful. I mean, we, we could stop cutting down the, the forests in the Arctic uh, to make paper towels and toilet paper. You know, I mean, yep. literally, we could be making that here uh, in, in Pennsylvania. And it's, uh, um, and that those are only, you know, tiny little, you know, uh, pieces of it. Right, there's like... Uh, one thing, I was just at the, as I told you earlier, I was just at the farm show mm -hmm. on, on Tuesday and I, uh, I, I bought a shirt made out of hemp. Um, you know, and it's like, and, and got a lesson in how the, the hemp stalks that, that, that the, that the fiber people, that the people want to make fabrics out of it, they want something that's pencil thin, right. you know, and, and, uh, and the guys who are making the hempcrete, they want something that's like three inches thick right. and hemp can do that. You can, depending on how, what, you know, whatever. And you start to get into the idea of, well, where are the seeds coming from? How can we control those? And, and everything else in the growing part is it's really a fascinating uh, uh, story of, and particularly about the fact that it was literally chopped off at its knees um, for political reasons. Um, you know, at, 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 at the time, um, even the term marijuana was made up. You know, it, it's, uh, yeah. um, but it's still know, sort of you know, like a victim of this political conversation, though, right? Like just that it's yeah. a difficult pill for people to swallow because it's associated with marijuana. It's like, okay, get over it. Let's let's uh, sequester some carbon. Let's, you know, mitigate climate yeah. change. Let's, I mean, when... Well, even things like, you know, um, uh, I'm all for, uh, for, for animal feed from hemp. You know, particularly for animals, at least in the short term, for animals we don't plan on eating. Like, feed it to horses. You know, it's... Uh, um, and, and uh, uh, you know, I know the FDA process is there to protect uh, consumers, but still, um, I think it should at least be fast tracked. Uh, well, you can feed hemp food. seeds to your baby and your children and your your grandmother, and we can eat it as humans. It's legally, it's got yeah. you know uh, grass status from the FDA, but it's totally right. illegal to feed to livestock. Which, like, yeah, I get it. There's the checks and balances on that whole you know ingredient process, but come on, humans right. have been consuming this plant for thousands of years, feeding it to their animals for thousands of years. Um, I had a guest one time a couple of years ago talk to me about the uh, like a cannabinoid deficiency, like maybe one of the reasons for, you know, there's a lot of, you know, unwellness in, you know, the human population at this point. And maybe it's because uh, the cannabinoids aren't in the diet anymore. I don't know. I don't I don't know if that maybe that's far fetched. I, I don't know. But still, there's something to it. Um, so you, would you ever consider introducing legislation that would allow for, um, hemp grain to be fed to livestock? We'd certainly be, want to be in that conversation. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, you know, because of the partisan politics that exist in Harrisburg, um, that's something in particular that would have to, I think, come from the other side of the aisle to have any success of, of moving forward. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we do have, um, we have good conversations with people who are, uh, um, you know, on the other side who are very interested in, in, in agriculture. 
Um, and, and it's, you know, it's still the agriculture is still the number one, uh, uh, economic mover in, uh, in, the in the Commonwealth. Yep. So it's, and I think agriculture has a huge role to play in, in the new economy, in the green economy, if you will. I know that's, you know, yeah, some yeah. people don't want to hear I, those, those words together, but agriculture has a, a huge role to play here. And it's like farmers get blamed so much for climate change. It's like maybe the, the oil and gas industries have successfully created this narrative that all the cow farts are what's causing it. Yes. But let's be honest with it. It's about energy. It's about transportation. And agriculture could be pulling so much carbon yeah. from the atmosphere. And not, not to beat a dead horse, but we, um, you know, we're very interested in reestablishing supply chains that are short, mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, and, you know, um, th this is a perfect tool for that to create areas where we can, we can, like I said, grow it in, in, uh, in more rural areas mm -hmm. and get it to, uh, places like Delaware County where, um, we, you know, we have every possible mode of transportation comes through Delaware County, right, right. uh, you know, in terms of, uh, uh making it all work. So, um, you know, I, I do think right now the crucial next step is this separation. It's this idea of trying to, um, you know, separate, as you put it, the medicinal uses and the and the CBD oils and everything else, and leave that over here and treat the fiber and the grain in, in a in a uh, in a much different way. Right. Um, the, the testing requirements right now uh, are are draconian, you know, and they're really. They, they cost a lot. I think they're unnecessary in so many ways for growers who want to, you know, who want to supply a commodity crop that has nothing to do with um, getting high, right. nothing to do with uh, the, as the, the medicinal piece. Um, we can't have hurdles like these testing if we really want this to compete with other commodities and, and in a ways where we can have those short supply chains and literally start doing good things for uh for not only for the uses that we need and the products that we need, but for the, the way we get it and the way that it transports it mm -hmm. and et, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cheers to that. It's like, I, I look at industrial hemp and it, it's, it should be boring and ubiquitous, right? It's not a big deal. It's, it's just farming. It's like you plant some seeds, you grow it. I mean, I've, I've stood in, you know, hundred acre fields of hemp out West. Right. And it's just, it doesn't look like marijuana. I mean, yeah, if you look up close, the leaves are the same, but you see this great big field of, you know, grain, grain hemp. And it's just like, oh yeah, that's, that's farming. That's, there it is. It's like yeah. corn and soy and it works really well in the rotation. Um, but and there's, you know, there's some great research being done on, you know, how close together do you plant them? You know, it's like, uh, you know, what do you do in order to create the cultivars that are, yeah. um, you know, the fiber people want stuff that's 14 feet tall. Yeah. Right. You know, kind of it's. Uh, and that's um, that's the stuff that like we lost that knowledge by taking it out yeah. of production for 80 years. Like people used to know all about that. And now we have to relearn it. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm an architect and I, I remember being out at um, Taliesin West, which is the Frank Lloyd Wright home in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Okay. And uh, Wright was one of the first people to use uh, fabric shading devices like sails mm -hmm. um, that are. Um, and they're kind of all over the place at Taliesin, and they're all made out of hemp. Oh no, kidding! They were, yeah. Hemp was the material that he that he he specified because it had it lasted the longest. It held its shape. It held its color. Right. It was it was really an interesting uh, 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 thing for me. Right. So it, it's you know I just the it, it's such an opportunity for Pennsylvania to literally um, you know we're already behind Kentucky in terms of the way we do these things, which is. You know, Mitch McConnell, God bless him, was the reason that the farm bill was done. Industrial hemp. You know, the national farm bill was done in a way to to allow for hemp to uh, to come back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And not that I want to, you know, uh, put much credence in in, in his work, but it's, uh, it's something that could really work for Pennsylvania. And, you know, the fact that we could literally, you know, create the supply chain, we could literally grow it here, we could literally manufacture it here, um, just seems like it's a... Uh, it's a it's a win-win for Pennsylvania in a way that we don't see it um, 
you know, we, we don't often see. Right. Yeah. I mean, one. this, like an opportunity like this never happens, right? Like you never see a new commodity crop get introduced. You never see an industry grow up out of nothing. But here we are. And it's like, the timing is pretty good. You know, like we've got economic issues. We've got health issues. We've got climate issues. And here's something that, you know, not by itself is going to heal things. But like, you know, like you said, it's a it's one of the really useful tool that we could use towards yeah. that. Um, and you got a lot of good, smart people who are thinking about it yeah. and trying to figure out the way to kind of move it forward. Yep. yep. Yeah. As I've you know been covering this industry, it's it's all about the people. There's some great folks out there. Um, you mentioned like the, the testing requirements and it's like I've mm-hmm. talked to farmers and they feel like they're being treated like criminals. It's like I have to go yeah. get my my fingerprints done every year for this. I have to pay these these great big, uh, you know, permit fees. Um Again, I was out west yeah. last last year and I was talking to a farmer in Montana and he's like, I'm not growing this next year if I have to go get fingerprinted again because he's got to go travel like four hours out to the, the state capital. It's just like, why are we making it hard for farmers to, you know, essentially save the world? So I don't know. It's frustrating. It's, a lot of it is overcoming this, you know, generations of propaganda. Uh, you, you know, the if the reason that medical marijuana is so expensive in, you know, in Pennsylvania is because of the requirements that the government has put on, on the, the growers, the manufacturers, the everything else, the, the, the chain of custody demands mm. are, are pretty incredible. And um, the, the profit you know, margins are pretty high too, though, aren't they? Well, profit margins are high. Yes. But, but um, you know, when you have a crop that uh, where the, the THC level um, is elevated. And the law right now, the, the growers tell me that they have ways that they could, they could treat it and bring it down, but they're not allowed to, hmm. they have to destroy it. Right. You know, the, the whole thing. Sure. And, and, um, you know, when you go into those facilities, it's like you're, uh, um, it, it's, it's worse than like when you go visit a prison, you know, in, in terms of the, the, the way security. you check in yeah. and the way you got, yeah. you know, the, all the things you got to do, uh, you know, I've been in uh, uh, really high-tech pharmaceutical manufacturing places that aren't nearly as uh, um, as stringent in terms of the right the, 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 to treat everything. Right. Yeah. With you know the industrial side of things, it's like the THC level doesn't matter. You know, like if you're going to be chopping yeah. it down and making shirts out of it, you're going to chop it down before it even goes to flower. So like, That's why right. even worry about the THC? If somebody really wants to like sneak some pot plants in, they're not going to do it in a hemp field. They're probably just going to do it in their 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 backyard or their basement or something. It's like, it's so bizarre. Yeah. Um, there actually is an initiative uh, sort of at work. There's some people trying to get the um, industrial hemp exemption uh, language yeah. into the, the 2023 farm bill. How do you feel about that? I'm all for that. I mean, the, the exemption thing, again, it just makes sense. Anything we can do to kind of uh, separate, particularly the, 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 the manufacturable aspects of, mm-hmm. of hemp, right. um, I'm, I'm all for that. So. Um, what, in your opinion, can be done legislatively to sort of build the hemp processing infrastructure here in PA, you know, specifically on that industrial side? You know, I, I think that it needs to go hand in hand with the process towards decriminalization or legalization of adult use. I mean, those, the, you, you are right in that it's, the more we can do to make hemp seem boring, the, the better off we'll be legislatively. But I think that um, that's such a um, wholesale sea change in the way that we, you know, treat things, treat, you know, marijuana, treat cannabis, right. um, that I think in order for it realistically to move forward, those things kind of need to move at the same time, hopefully move and separate at the, you know, at, at the same time. Right. Um, what can listeners or readers do to help ensure that your bill that um, reconciles the definitions, what can, what can people do to sort of help you get it passed or in, in, encourage its passage? Yeah. I mean, I think that the, the, the biggest single thing they could do is to contact their senators. Um, so in Lancaster, you can contact uh, Ryan O'Ment or, or Scott Martin and, you know, and tell them, um, you know, basically that you support this and this is something that they should support. Uh, you know, I've, I've had great conversations with both of those senators and they're um, sometimes these things are just a, you know, the, the, 
you know, again, overcoming that propaganda of all those years and, and the sort of mindset there, they tend to be sympathetic, but not necessarily ready to, you know, be wholesale support. Right. So um, the more they hear from their constituents, the, um, the, the better. Okay. All right. And uh, I'll put a link on the show page for this episode to, you know, a list of uh, how to contact your, your senators here in Pennsylvania. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. So what else should we know about this bill or the work that you're doing in Harrisburg? Anything else you want to tell us before we wrap up? Well, I think we're, you know, Harrisburg often gets a bad rap for, you know, being partisan deadlock and not getting things done. Um, And it's true that there are certainly the bills that most people hear about tend to fall into those categories. But we still have a lot of bills that we pass all the time that keep the keep the Commonwealth moving forward and keep the government moving and, and everything else. And, um, you know, the more we can do to make hemp seem boring, the more we can get it into that category um, where we can literally uh, um, have a much better chance of getting it done and getting uh, getting things to happen sooner, not only for the farmers, not only for the truck drivers, not only for the manufacturers, but for basically everybody in the Commonwealth. All right. Senator Carney, it's great to talk to you today. Thank you for your time. Always a pleasure, Eric. All right, so there you go. What do you think about that? I'm curious. So just a little more information about this bill. Um, This is actually not the first time Senator Carney has introduced it. I wrote to Senator Carney's uh, policy director, Sam Arnold, just to get a little more sort of background on the history of this bill. And uh, here's what he wrote. He said, Senator Carney first introduced this bill in 2019 as SB 936. It was referred to the Judiciary Committee but never got a hearing or a vote. Then in 2021, the bill was reintroduced as SB 352 and was again referred to Judiciary where it did not move again. This will be the third time Senator Carney introduces the bill and I expect it to go to judiciary once again. Will it ever move? I do not believe it will move on its own unless there were greater changes being made to cannabis slash hemp legislation, in which case we could try to put this into the mix of policy changes. Should the legislature take up adult use cannabis, for example, we would try to bring this up. All right, so there you go. That's what he wrote. I appreciate it. Thank you, Sam. Uh, So I am tempted to think that uh, hemp legislation is being held hostage by the marijuana conversation, you know, which is disappointing to me, to say the least. Uh, If you listen to episode one of this season, you know that I think marijuana is just hindering hemp's ability to reach its full potential. What do you think? I would really like to know. You can send an email to me at podcast at lancasterfarming.com. All right, there you go. That's the show for this week. Um, I've got an interesting interview lined up for you next week. I'm going to be talking to Seth Boone from Pan Exchange. I don't know if you've seen their their report about the fiber industry, but it's really an in-depth look at the current state of fiber in the U.S., So uh, we're going to go just on a a deep dive with Seth next week. So uh, be sure to come back for that. Um, If you have, you know, opinions about what we talked about here on today's show, please let me know. You can always write to me, send an email to podcast at LancasterFarming.com. Heck, if you want to call me up and leave me a voicemail, I would love that too. You can call 717-721-4462. All right, well, that does it for me. Thanks again for listening to our show today. My name is Eric Herlock. I am the digital editor at Lancaster Farming Newspaper, the greatest agricultural newspaper in the world. So check us out online at LancasterFarming.com. All right, until next time, I'll see you in the newspaper. Industrial hemp. Season three, episode two of the Lancaster Farming Industrial Hemp Podcast is copyright 2023 by Lancaster Farming Newspaper, part of the Steinman Communications family. Today's show is written and recorded, edited and produced by Eric Harlock. The music you hear throughout the show is courtesy of Tin Bird Shadow. 